Hello, I'm M.K. Davis. I want to talk a little bit about film stock, and particularly the film stock that was used to film the Pat famous Patterson Bigfoot film. And uh, back in, when I first got started in this, uh, there was a, a few people that were commenting on it all those many years ago. And one of them was uh, Henner Fehrenbach. And Henner was a Ph.D., and a lot of people put a lot of stock in his word, and rightly so. But he, he kind of got out of his ex realm of expertise and ventured into the photography of the Patterson film, and he essentially regurgitated some some uh, commentary that other people had made on the internet about the resolution of the film and the film grain and the uh, impossibilities of enlargement without losing detail. Well, there was one image that he had to be wrong about. And that was that image that I've been featuring and that Todd Gatewood enhanced. And now people are doing the same thing, but essentially using that same information. And I found out later on that Dr. Fehrenbach was, uh, his expertise was a marine uh, vertebrate doctor. Invertebrate, I'm sorry, invertebrate, like oysters and stuff. Well, he he call he he sets this precedence that uh, nobody really wants to to argue with a PhD, and PhDs know it, uh, even if their expertise is not in or around that point of argument. Let me read you something. Again, I've read this to you before, but let's look at it again. Let's see if I can get this. Well, I'll have to just do this. Something's covered it up. That's what's covered it up. There we go. There we go. Here we are. Now this is the, uh, the, the image in question right there. And it, they even charged that the image was uh, fabricated. You know, like a hoax. Well, this is the... Cibrochrome, same frame, and and I think I explained that the Cibrochrome came from a paper printed image, and it is not as sharp as this one. This came off a transmission image, which the transmission image was the original film that was in Patterson's camera. Now the next question is, what film was that? Let me see if I, I hope I didn't get out of it. There it is, right there. Let's look at it. In January of 1980, we'll start right here. I participated, that's Bruce Bonney, in the first program to produce high quality color photographs from the original Patterson Gambling film. The original 16 millimeter. Kodachrome 2 film was first enlarged and then printed on 4 by 5 inch Kodak Ektachrome duplicating film. Then those transparencies were contact printed onto the uh, Cibrochrome paper. 
so it went through two processes to make it to the paper, it's still very good. We'll go back to, uh, oh no. Go back here. That's the zebra chrome print right here in the middle. Let's just enlarge it. Now that's not bad, but it's nowhere near as good as that. That's fantastic. And that's because it came off of a transparency and it, it was uh, still in the form of Kodachrome 2. The second best film stock ever made. The, the speed of the film was 25. And all you, you camera buffs who can remember back when people used film, that the lower that number, the finer the grain. 25 was so fine that you could take an image like that and put it on the side of a barn and it would not lose quality. You could put it on a billboard or you could put it on one of the buildings on Times Square. But by the time you took this image and you put it on uh, the, the other ectochrome, and then you transferred it from the ectochrome to the sebachrome paper, you had this. Now I'll, tell, I'll show you something. All right, let's take this and we'll use a color split on it and we'll see what, what filtering will do for the zebra chrome. All right, we'll just put them side by side here. Now this right here, which they call it K, uh, it's, it's essentially split uh, CMYK, which is uh, a split that they do for the sake of printing the image. So uh, it, instead of RGB, it's a CMYK. It's uh, still it's, it's, uh, splitting the colors like a prism uh, using a digital uh, method. Now this is a, a good bit sharper, but it's fainter because... It is the information that is like right in here, this dark area. You see, it brightened it up too, didn't it? Uh, now, let's go to yellow. The information that's in yellow. Hey, that. look at it carefully. That's a good bit sharper than this. Why is it sharper? Because it has the other information that's not sharp removed from it. So, let's just go again to my magenta. Oh man, that's terrible. That's actually a, a worse than this one. So that's one of the, the colors that is not properly focused and it contributes to the unsharpness of this uh, Cibachrome print. And then you go to cyan and it's the worst one of all. You see what I mean? So you, uh, you can actually delete the colors and, and, and then uh, you end up with a monochrome, which is like this. This is a monochrome. 
but it was filtered, not digitally, but back in the day, it was filtered with, uh, with glass, colored glass that they exposed the image through. And it, it was always Kodachrome 2 25-speed film. The second best film stock ever made. And it had a real coveted method of processing that they would not let anyone know. I know from my research okay this is something that's written about it and it's helpful uh, the reason I say it's helpful because Kodachrome 2 has been get gone for a number of years it was discontinued and so they they're asking the question here about compared to the the modern digital imagery what would 25 speed Kodachrome 2 uh, film stock compared to in digital when modern photography tested lenses their figures went to around 50 millimeter which would correspond to 100 pixels uh, with that is 24 3600 that is he goes to the end point 8.6 megapixels. Okay, they could push Kodachrome to 100 millimeter using the best lenses at optimal aperture using a very heavy tripod and focus bracketing. Add to that, they were analyzing the test images under a microscope. Anyway, 100 millimeter would yield about, around 35 megapixels. Now, a 4K television is about 10 megapixels. Pay attention. 4K, 10 megapixels. This Kodachrome 2 would yield about 35 megapixels. So it is probably a decent match for good quality 24 by 36 millimeter images on film. Let me see if I can get this up here. But if you shoot an extremely good image on, say, Kodachrome 25 and extract all information, you would need 8K to show all the detail. Understand, you would need 8K to show the detail that Kodachrome 25 could yield. what this is doing on there. I guess I accidentally caught it. Yeah, it was my, my fault for doing my screen. Let me see if I can read through this. Okay, I can't, but uh, it, it at the least, at the very least, it would yield, I mean, when I say very least, that's if the lens wasn't all that great, and the uh, or maybe the film itself wasn't completely flush in its holder. Uh, that it would yield five K images, five K. But an extremely good image on say Kodachrome twenty five, it would yield. It would, you would need an 8K to show all that detail. So that's the comparison. You would need an 8K camera to yield what this Kodachrome 25 and a good camera would produce. I hope you understand what I'm talking about because I'm being spoken up pretty poorly right now. And they don't know what they're talking about. And I don't know for the life of me why anyone would be against this. This wonderful image. It's easily explained by the nuts and bolts of photography. This is Kodachrome 2 
25-speed film stock with a decent lens. This is the only one they did this way. Bruce Bonney got in a lot of trouble for releasing this. You figure that one out. But it is fantastic. Fantastic. And then Todd is able to push that image uh, to the next level. Todd Gatewood. There it is. Cyberchrome. Let's see here. There's other things you can do digitally. Like you could take this one. I'm just going to very briefly do this. Let me see if I'm even close. Fairly close. Let me go to a transparency. I'll see if they line up. So you can kind of get the best. You can take this one and boost it with that one. You see every cotton picking thing that's in this one. And this is the one that Jeff Meldrum uses in his book, Legends Meet Science. He didn't have any problem with it. The inferior image, he loved it. But you got something that actually shows you something about the Sasquatch. Oh, no, he can't have that. I, I will say this. If he had been with the Egyptians, we we would have never had the pyramids. That's just my opinion. Go back to about a 35. I like that 40 better. All right. That's just some things you can do when you have an image. These are the two best images of frame 350. This zebra chrome print, which was made from this right here. It was made to tr transfer to ectochrome. It took a, took, a, took a hit in quality. And then it was transferred to zebra chrome paper, which it took another hit. There we go. All right. 
Well, that's all I have to say. That's my diatribe. I'm not going to argue about it. But I will say this. This is the top. This is the best. It's not going to get any better short of just actually bringing a Sasquatch in and and uh, sitting down and and pulling his lips up and showing the teeth and the saliva and that hasn't yet happened but you can rely on this imagery you can absolutely rely on it I'm still hunting one of them is down too far there we go. You can rely on this image right here. It is at the top. All other images are inferior. Kodachrome 2. Cibachrome via ectochrome. Thank goodness. Bruce Bonney wrote it down. And he released this. This is the, the face of a Sasquatch. Even more importantly, This is the face of a Sasquatch. That image was so good that it could be pushed. And when you push it, you're looking, you're looking at the real McCoy. And that film was capable of producing imagery like this throughout the length of it. Not every frame, but a lot of them. Bruce Bonney knew that, too. Now, why they would not release these and be happy to do it is another story. Let me try to find my image again. Figured I would get there eventually, but I may have X out of it already. I did. I always like to end like I began. with my own picture. So, I hope you not only enjoyed this, but I hope it gave you something to think about. Remember, 25 speed film. You can take that picture of Patty and you can put it on the side of a building and it wouldn't lose much quality. And just imagine the entire film being done that way. But what's got to happen is who, for these people who, for whatever reason, do not want this, this image to take root. They've got to let go. You can't hold the truth back. 
and I suggest they embrace it. It's the only thing you can do. You can't make it something it's not. You can't. It's not a fabrication. And if, it, if you think it is, then leave the film alone. Don't use the film in any of your theories or any of your presentations. If you think it's fabrication, then the whole thing is. But it's not. And I thank you for your time.